climate change is increasingly posing a challenge to agriculture development in Africa. The destruction caused by floods and the devastation by drought across the continent really demonstrate the threat posed by the unpredictable weather patterns. Now this year, Zimbabwe is expecting its biggest harvest of maize in 20 years, a sign that the country could be ending its cycle of food deficits due to successive droughts and a troubled land reform program undertaken in the early 2000s. Now, official data shows the country will harvest about 2.7 million metric tonnes of the staple grain. Uh, this would be almost 200% higher than last year. Now, DW News Africa went to Zimbabwe's Mashona Land West province, from where DW's correspondent, Privilege Mushanyiri, sent us this report. 44-year-old Jane Chinamo is a rural farmer from Mashona Land West. She is sorting part of a grain harvest. This year, she finally got a bumper crop. Jane and her family have suffered from continuous droughts for the past five years. Her case is similar to many families across Zimbabwe who often survive on food aid. But good rains in 2021 have ensured enough food. The past few years were extremely difficult. We had no food. Food was scarce and it was difficult to feed the family. We were scrounging to survive and only eating survival meals. Things have changed this season. Because of the rains, we had a good harvest and they have more than we need. We are eating normal meals. Zimbabwe is expecting to get a surplus of over 820,000 tons of grain tripling its maize output from last year. This is the highest yield since the year 2000 when Zimbabwe embarked on a controversial land reform. The land reforms led to the collapse of Zimbabwe's agriculture-based economy and sparked large-scale food shortages. To this day, aid agencies still feed more than half of the country's population. Zimbabwe has been fortunate to get a big harvest at a time when other southern African countries like Angola and Madagascar are gripped with a severe drought. The challenge now is to manage post-harvest losses. Like here, where this farmer is harvesting, they are expected to boost the national grain reserves by delivering to the national silos. Part of Zimbabwe's agricultural recovery plan is to invest in drought-resistant farming methods. This may have played a role in the 2021 good harvest. Coming from two consecutive years of drought, it's been a very rough uh, two years for us and we've learned from our mistakes and we now know that climate change is indeed a real, real uh, 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 issue and that we need to mitigate against it. Back at Jane Chinamo's homestead, it is time to prepare the evening family meal. The family is optimistic that for the months ahead, they will not sleep on empty stomachs. And to further our conversation now about the future of farming, we've invited Mandla Nkomo from Zimbabwe onto the program. He is an agro-food specialist. Welcome to DW News Africa, Mandla. Let's begin uh, by talking about this year's harvest in Zimbabwe. It's, it's looking very impressive, but is it sustainable? No, thanks a lot. I think uh, that's a very good question. Um, it is and it isn't. Um, it's, it's sustainable in the sense that if you look at how we got this harvest this year, it was uh, really as a result of a combination of things coming together to, to create the conditions possible for, for such harvest. I think, first of all, the agroclimatic conditions were near perfect. Uh, if you look at the rainfall map across Zimbabwe, you realize that a big chunk of the country actually got above average uh, rainfall this year. And the rain was nicely spread across the, the, the growing season for the crops. Secondly, I think government actually did a good job in ensuring that uh, farmers got most of the inputs on time, such as the seed uh, and the fertilizer. And as a result, if you combine you know, proper access to inputs, good agricultural, uh, agroclimatic conditions. 
I think you can always have a decent harvest, even in difficult years. But why I'm saying that it might not be sustainable is there is no guarantee that this coming rainy season is going to be as good as the previous one, and also whether mm. government will actually be able to repeat what they were able to do last year. Okay, and that really brings me to my next question, because Zimbabwe's government seems to have accepted uh, that the rains will fail more and more often, as they had in the previous years. Uh, what do you think about the plan put forward by the Zimbabwean government to invest in so-called drought-resistant farming methods? Well, I think, uh, to be quite honest, if there's one thing that worked very well this, this past season, it was exactly that. Uh, this uh, from Woods uh, into us uh, program, uh, which is really uh, what people would call, um, uh, you know, climate smart agriculture or conservation farming uh, approach, uh, worked very well. I was looking at the statistics in preparation for this interview. The government was able to train over two million uh, households on how to grow food security crops using uh, this Fumvudza method where you, you ha basically have uh, a minimum disturbance of the soil, you've got um, you know better water retention strategies, etc. And that seemed to work very well. And I think that's the way to go because from the looks of things, uh, climate change is here to stay and we need to, to adapt and, and respond mm. to it. Mantla, looking at the continent as a whole, many rural communities live with terrible poverty uh, and often hunger. How can this, this new style of farming, as, as you've been describing, provide a path out of poverty and for food security for, for the region? Well, I, I think um, it's, it's not a silver bullet. Let's start there, uh, that uh, this approach to, to farming, whether it's uh, conservation agriculture or climate smart agriculture or what the Zimbabweans call from Vodza or Indwasa is not a silver bullet. I think what it does, though, is that it gives farmers a fighting chance to be able to grow enough food for themselves. But we do know that uh, what we actually need to be doing is to be growing food for food markets uh, across the continent. And if you look at the latest data from uh, the African Development Bank, uh, what's happening is that our food import bill is actually increasing and not going down. It used to be 30 billion a few years ago. I've had uh, you know numbers that are approaching closer to 100 billion. So, so what we need to do is to completely re-enable uh, Africa's food production capacity to meet the needs of uh, of Africans. And I think it requires more than just basic you know household food security. It requires interventions on the research side, uh, mm. on the inputs provision side, on the mechanization, and also on how markets are governed. Okay, so, so Mandla, let's talk about how technology, specifically mobile phones, can play a role in all of this. Well, I think, I mean, that's something I'm personally very excited about because in the work that I do, we have seen real value in how uh, you know mobile technology or digital technologies can actually be very transformative. Uh, I'm of the firm view that uh, digital is the great equalizer. If we look at what we've been able to achieve with digital technology in financial services, with uh, you know tools like Mpesa and others, I believe the next frontier is going to be how do we digitally enable agriculture. My estimate is that uh, the bulk of small-scale farmers across the continent do have access to mobile phones now. Now, we need to see that mobile phone as a source of information, as a source of advisory, as a source of uh, you know business transactions. So we need to build the next you know, chapter of African agriculture around mobile technology and try to enable, uh, you know, agriculture from a digital perspective. Uh, I think the tools are there. Mm. What seems to be missing, though, is how do we curate the tools and make them work in a way that actually delivers the change that we want to see. All right, that is Mandla Nkomo talking to us there. We appreciate your time and insight, Mandla. Thank you. It's a pleasure.
And our next story shows how smartphones can be transformative for farmers. Maize is a staple crop across much of eastern and southern Africa, and it's not just climate change that's causing problems. Now, this big critter too uh, that you see behind me, the fall armyworm, it's actually the caterpillar of a moth native to the United States, but it's not stayed there. The pest is spreading around the world, ruining harvests, like in, here in southern Africa in 2017. But one project in Ghana is helping farmers to fight back against the hungry caterpillars with the smartphone app, like the farmer in our next report from Ashanti Land. Now, our correspondent Isaac Kaleji takes up the next story. Seven hectares of maize on this small holding in Ghana's Ashanti region. These men are working with farm owner Musa Al Hassan. He struggled to secure a bumper harvest, though he's been on his farm for 25 years. It is the 41 year old's only source of livelihood. One of our major problems has been the fall army worms. They've been devastating. They've simply destroyed our crops. We haven't been able to detect them early enough in order to control them. This has affected our yield badly. It's been making it difficult for us to grow enough here on the farm for us to live on. Al Hassan first heard about an innovation called the Equafu AI app in 2019. Using the mobile phone, he can detect very early on which areas of the maize fields have been infested. The app compares his crops with an online database and provides farmers with animated video in the local dialect, detailing steps to be taken to control the pests. The Okwafu Foundation is behind the tech solution, led by software developer Mustafa Diaol Haq. Today, the developers are meeting Al Hassan on his farm to talk more about the technology. The year old hack explains why this innovation is crucial for farmers like Al Hassan. Our technology has helped um, in the fight against hunger and malnutrition by driving um, about 40 to 50 percent growth um, yield in, 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 in crops for farmers, and that in turn brings them um, money as well as food to keep for the um, rest of the year to feed their families. Al Hassan harvested 16 sacks of maize, up from just five the year before. He says the technology is a game changer in controlling the pests. This technology has helped me to detect the pests really quickly, and I was able to get help to spray the farm and control them. So this innovation has been significant in increasing our yields. The year old Hack and his team are not only thinking of farmers in Ghana, but also want to serve millions across Africa. The plan is to expand to other African countries and enable farmers there to be able to diagnose their crops early enough, um, save a lot of money on pesticides, and um, in turn be able to feed their families and um, contribute to the growth of the African economy at large and growth in Al Hassan's yields, giving him more money in his pocket and the hope of an even better harvest this season. To Cameroon now, where the Global Hunger Index says the Western African country experiences moderate levels of hunger. But here, conflict is the main reason for food insecurity. Farming has been greatly disrupted in the country's far north region, where the army is fighting against a Boko Haram insurgency and the West, where English-speaking separatists are trying to create a breakaway state. Now, our correspondent Blaise Ayong reports from Cameroon's Anglophone West. Fiona Ngwa and her husband can only plant their crops around their home. For nearly 30 years, the two of them have depended on subsistence agriculture for their livelihood after her 86-year-old husband retired from his job as a truck driver. But since 2017, when conflict broke out here in the Anglophone region of Cameroon, they have not been able to access their fields. Farmers across the region blame separatist militias and sometimes government soldiers of targeting them. Daddy, daddy. The separatists try to make us pay a fee so we can access our own fields. That's made us afraid. 
and forced us to abandon them. There's no one farming them anymore. Sometimes the separatists force us down on the ground and beat us while demanding money. The area where Fiona used to grow her food crops has now been completely abandoned. It's been like this for thousands of farmers in the region, where fighting between the army and English-speaking separatist militias has forced many to flee. Fiona and her husband used to produce enough food for themselves and some left over to sell. But now they depend on food aid, which doesn't come regularly. The couple is having a hard time planting enough maize for the next harvest. This farm is quite small. Compared to my previous fields, there's nothing much I can grow here. I used to farm enough food to feed my children and the rest of the family. It's too small. It doesn't help me much. It is not just the farmers who are affected, but consumers too. 20-year-old Patu comes to the market to buy foodstuffs several times a week. She has been doing so since she was 14. In the last few years, her family has been struggling each week to find enough money to buy food for the entire household. Since the crisis started... Since the conflict began, the cost of food has soared at the market. Prices have gone up to three times what they used to be. Things like vegetables, kokayam and plantains are among the most expensive at the market. Food security was already being threatened by climate change. Now, it seems the growing conflict in West and Central Africa has only worsened the situation. UN forecasts suggest that up to 31 million people may not have enough to eat in the coming months.